Hello friends. I hope you're ready today because it's time. Time to make Christmas art. So welcome to my kitch, kitch, kitchen. Kitchen. Yeah. Um, I say that because we're going to make kitschy Christmas art today. Um, we're going to put some little Christmas trees on these and it's going to be something you can hang on the wall or prop up on a mantle, something kind of mid-century cute. I'm going to try to make it easy so that everybody can do it. So let's go over supplies you will need. Tony, what are you doing? Thank you. Okay, so I have got a cup of water, some painter's tape, a sketch pencil, paper towels, lots of paint, and then paint brushes. And then of course your canvases. You can also use pieces of wood if you want to, um, or paper if you wanna just hang them up or put them in a frame. So let's get started. All right, we'll start with this big canvas. Um, so all of the trees that I've been looking at that are been century style are just kind of triangles. So what we're going to do is just sketch out what we want. You can use a ruler if you want to. I have a pretty steady hand, so I usually don't. Um, I'm going to make the base of this a little different. Kind of just wing it, you know, be creative. And then we need the trunk. Put that in the middle. Um, and then you can put a star up there. I'll do probably like a mid-century style star. And then just do that. Makes it a little easier. Um, and then in the tree, we'll just add the flare when we paint it. So um, what we're going to do now, now that I've sketched this out, I'm going to have two different background colors on this one. I want to do stripes. And I think what I'm going to want to do is use like the ocean green and parchment stripes. Kind of give it like a vintagey look. Any of these pastels are really good um, for Christmas kitschy stuff. So what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to tape this off. Well, first I'm going to paint the parchment color around the tree. And then I'm going to tape it off with the green. All right, doesn't have to be precise right now because this is just gonna get painted over mostly, but you wanna get your general idea. Something a lot of people forget to do that makes things look a lot better just if you're not gonna frame your canvas to paint the edges of your canvas. Makes it look a lot better if you're just gonna kinda lean it up against something rather than hang it on the wall too. It's just a little detail, um, a little bit of attention to detail that makes a tiny difference, but in the grand scheme of things, makes a big difference. Tony, what are you doing? Here's our assistant. This is Tony Baloney. She really likes to stick her nose in paint. It's still purple from a few weeks ago where she stuck it in uh, purple paint. All right. So we're gonna let that dry. All right, while this is drying a little bit more, we'll go ahead and draw another tree right here, just so we can kind of get an idea. The way my brain works, I have to actually get it out on paper before I know what I'm doing. I have to visualize it. So it always makes me feel better to just go ahead and start the process. So we'll do another triangle. This one will just be basic. A basic acute triangle. What about that? Friggin' geometry class. All right, I'm gonna put your thing. Um, and then put star. You can just do a regular star if you want. 
All right, and then we'll get the other one. We'll go ahead and do another one while we got our sketch pencil out. Make sure you guys can see it. Now, I don't know what I'm gonna do here. Let's figure it out. So we've got a weird one. Right triangle. So we'll do, I don't know, we'll see. I'm gonna start drawing and then maybe it'll happen. I'm thinking kind of a mid-century style here. Oh, I know what I'll do. I'm gonna make it one of those little tall trees. So this is not existent, we'll paint over that. Yeah, so we'll have a really long trunk and then a cute little perfect tree up here. Make it a little fatter. That'll be cute. All right, we're gonna paint the rest of the background on these. Let's see. So on this one, I think I also wanna do stripes with the parchment background. Um, so I'll go ahead and get that out. And paint that like the other one. Get my brush out of the water. And that way I can use up what I put for the other one. I'm gonna do stripes. I'm gonna do black and white stripes on this one, I think to make it kind of funky. Might look a little beetle juicy, but you know, my house is pretty Tim Burton-y anyway. Nothing wrong with that. So, secret, the only reason I have a blow dryer is for drying acrylic paint because I'm impatient. Um, it wasn't until I got these bangs that I needed to use it on my hair. So I'm gonna hit this with a blow dryer so we can make this go faster. So this wee one, I want the background to be yellow. I'll use Turner's yellow, so it's a little bit darker yellow. This is a really weird reason. I'm trying to kill two birds with one stone. This is kind of a glimpse into my brain. You guys know that I wanted an aqua Christmas tree, but it's $100. And uh, being as though I don't have a gerb, I can't afford $100. So I'm thinking I might want to spray paint my white tree um, a color. But I'm not sure what color I want to do because it's got to go in the living room, which is yellow. So what I'm going to do, I have a hunch that I want it to be orange. Um, so I am going to use this painting to see if the yellow on my walls, which is pretty much Turner's yellow and orange look good together. And then I can figure out if I'm going to do it orange and then what color um, my ornaments and stuff are going to be. So anybody has any success with spray painting a tree please let's talk about it in the comments i know i probably need to use a primer it's not a nice tree it's like a 35 dollars tree i got at walmart but um you know might as well paint it a crazy color i also i love orange but i don't want people to think that we care about football because we're in tennessee and you know ut orange um and you know people if they think you care about football they try to talk to you about football and uh i don't know it's just gross so if we could avoid that that'd be super but maybe they won't make the connection maybe i'll just not care if it looks good enough i just won't care if it doesn't look good, maybe I'll spray paint the tree aqua. I don't have enough paint. I've got to cover up the sketch marks, so we got to have a little bit of a thicker coat on this one. And I'm just talking at this point, but different paint has different properties, like different colors. Yellows and greens tend to be thinner, um, where a lot of the blues are thicker. Reds are usually pretty thin. You gotta figure it out when you start painting. 
And it's funny because the same properties apply when you're using latex paint to like to paint your walls. Like when I did my living room in this yellow, I also had to use two coats and a paint that was supposed to only be one coat because it's just thin. What they use to make the yellow is thin. Full of weird information like that that doesn't really matter. Too bad I can't remember. It's on my grocery list. Or to bring my grocery list, I guess I should say. Okay, so we're going to make our stripes. Um, some people probably think that artists should do everything by hand. Um, and while I agree to a certain point, there's no reason to make things harder on yourself than they have to be. So I use painter's tape to make my stripes and I don't care who gets mad about it. An easy way to do where you don't have to measure is you can take and rip off a little piece of the same thickness or the different thickness, whatever you want to do. Kind of just put it there. And then that gives you a guide of where to lay down the other tape so that it's straight. So we'll go ahead and lay the tape down. This one is going to have bigger stripes because it's a bigger picture. And I kind of just like the chunky look. Um, the other one I've got smaller, skinnier tape for. So we'll do that. Also, the other one's going to be black and white. So it doesn't need to be quite so bold since this one's muted colors. I figure it's all right. This one's gonna be a little funky, but it'll be fine. Generally, I kind of hate painter's tape um, for walls because it never seems to work for me. So I've gotten to the point where I paint so much, I don't really need it anymore for walls. Something like this is just save a little bit of time. All right. That one's done, on to the next. Oops, that wasn't dry enough. We will uh, worry about that later. Hopefully the whole thing won't get destroyed, but if it does, it's not the end of the world. Because it's just paint. Yeah, so just make sure they dry really good in between, unlike me. Do as I say, not as I do. All right. Push it down. And these two are ready for stripes. Guys, you're hearing a noise probably. 
sounds like me heavy breathing, um, but it's actually Lunchbox. He is snoring in the sunshine. Um, so don't think I'm just sitting here breathing out my mouth. There's our heavy breather. All right, so now we have the fun part. And we get to see if I mess this whole thing up by not letting it dry enough. Oops, got a chunk. We'll have to fix that, it won't be a big deal. Just a little bit of a steady hand. It'll be fine. All right. We're gonna fix this and then the fun part. All right, so it lumps into my brain. On my palette, I have these colors and they look really good together, but I don't wanna overdo it. Um, so I think I'm gonna have some yellow in here just cause that super looks really good together. Um, but I'm also gonna do some purples. So um, we'll see, I'm just gonna start painting. All right, we're gonna do this one lavender. Just to be different. I was thinking about green, but I don't know. Just didn't feel right.
All right, now we're gonna paint this little guy. And I'm like 99% sure I'm still gonna want it to be uh, aqua. It's because that looks really good with this color, um, or I guess teal. But we're gonna try the orange, see what color I should spray paint that. If it doesn't work, we'll paint over it white, paint it back teal. All right, so I started painting this orange and I hate it. So I'm gonna fix it. Okay, I'm gonna put a couple more coats of paint on these, let them dry a little bit, and then we'll decorate them. All right, I know this isn't very fancy. I'm really sorry guys, but we gotta work with what we got. So, sorry if it bothers you that it's crooked or whatever. This one I'm gonna put a garland on. Cause I can't think of much else more mid-century kitschy than a garland. If I could put tinsel on here, I would. Okay, now on this, I think I'm gonna add some little Christmas balls. Put some balls on it, just some little balls. Just here and there. Schmutz on me. Got some paint. All right, I'm going to try something unique on this one that I've seen on a couple like mid-century greeting cards. This might look terrible, but we'll see what happens. All right, that way we can have a little bit more color. Okay, so we got quite a few colors here. I'm just gonna kind of play with it. Um, I can't decide if I want a whole bunch of different colors or one color. So um, I know pink and green go good together. And green looks nice with that background. So we'll start that with that. And then I'll start with the largest one. We'll see how we like it. We may end up just using green to keep it simple. We might end up using some other colors. I also have another shade of green. It might be kind of neat. So that's something that makes um, a neurodivergent person most of the time a little bit different from other people. Like with me, my ADHD, what that does is normal people can visualize the end goal. So like they'd be able to sit down, think about what color they wanted the trees already and they'd be able to visualize it. With me, I can't visualize an end goal ever with any project. So it makes it difficult to start projects and then it makes it difficult 
to plan projects because you really can't plan if you can't visualize the end goal. Um, so with painting, with me, I just have to start doing it and then kind of wing it. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And I realize that that's not ideal, but unfortunately, there's no other way my brain works. I've tried for years and years and years to rewire my brain to be different and uh, it just doesn't work. So at this point, I just accept it and enjoy it and uh, try to appreciate the benefits of being different. But that's just something to think about. If you've got friends that have ADHD or um, you know autism, certain types of autism, um, then sometimes, you know, part of the reason they have an issue doing things is just because they can't visualize what the uh, end result is going to be. All right, I think that looks good. Very cute. Very simple. All right, with this guy, there's a lot of different colors that go really well with lavender. Um, it's a light green looks good. Uh, red looks good, believe it or not. A lot of people think it doesn't, but it totally does. Yellow looks nice. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna have the strand of the garland be a bright green. This one's gonna be more colorful than the other one. They call this color light olive, which to me doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but I would call it chartreuse. Because I like the word chartreuse. so we're gonna put some yellow in there I think um well I don't know I don't know if yellow is gonna look good with that let's try red be kind of a more traditional tree we'll put some red we won't do all of them red I know I really like the red yeah, we'll do all of them red. So another cool thing about all these colors, um, my whole house is decorated in jewel tones and most of my Christmas stuff is really, really colorful. So no matter where I decide to put these trees, if I wanna put them together or separate, whatever, um, they're gonna go. So that's the cool part about having rainbow stuff is if something has every color in the rainbow in it, then it's going to go with all your other stuff that's also rainbow. At least I think it goes. I'm sure there's people who don't, but we don't care about them.
adults. All right, so they're all done. Um, and I'm gonna outline a few things in black just to make it look a little more put together. I like to outline stuff in black sometimes. Kind of makes it pop. You can use a Sharpie if you want. If you don't wanna use a paintbrush, it won't hurt anything. Oh, hi, Tony. Again, again with the Tony. Why are you up here? Don't be rude. <clears throat> She's about to try to start knocking stuff down. Hi, sis. It's Tony Baloney. Excuse me. Um, rude. You're very rude. <laughs> Stop that. Quit that. Goofy girl. Okay, so I put them up there to kind of see, show you guys how I'll display them. I don't know if I'll put them all together or if I'll put them separate, but that is done they're not perfect but they look really cute together so that's what counts thank you guys for watching i'm gonna go clean up this giant mess that tony and i made um be bright do right